one of the team at Amazon Prime Video recently posted a tech blog on why they moved from serverless architecture towards monolithic architecture. In this particular video, we are going to discuss this case study and understand why Amazon moved from microservices based serverless architecture towards a monolithic based architecture. And we are going to break down and look at how did they achieved it and what helped them save so much cost. Let's get started. The primary use case which the Prime Video team presented here was specific to the monitoring service. So initially we are going to look at what is this audio video monitoring service all about. We will be looking at the initial serverless architecture which they had. We will be transitioning into the new monolithic architecture which they had changed the previous architecture to. We will understand how they were able to scale using the monolithic architecture. And finally, I will jot down the results and the takeaways which the team has mentioned. To set the context, let's understand what this audio video monitoring service does. As a customer, when we watch a video using the Amazon Prime Video service, every video which we watch is being monitored by a service or a team which identifies different faults within that particular video. This is all done to identify the quality of the video and this is owned by a team called Video Quality Analysis VQA team and they do inspection on each and every video in terms of the audio and the video. We will drill down into feature specifics in the next slide but at a high level this particular team is responsible for monitoring the whole video as and when we watch and understand if there are any issues with respect to the streaming of that particular video or audio. After analyzing the cost of their deployment and operations, they understood that there are two major expensive operations which they work on. The first and the foremost is the orchestration of the entire process or the workflow, right from the video getting in and understanding the pattern and then aggregating the results. Of course, the next one was the data transmission between these distributed components within their architecture. If you already know, with microservices architecture, when there are a lot of distributed components within the system, it takes more time and cost with transferring data across these services. So that was another major expensive operation which the team was going through. So this is how their initial architecture looked like. There were three major components within their architecture. The first component was the media converter or the media conversion service. Whenever a customer watches a video, the stream of data comes into the media conversion service and that particular service converts the audio and the video into a format where you can either decrypt the audio or you can use the audio and the video streams to convert into frames. These frames and buffers are sent to the defect detectors. If you look at low level, these are information which are just extracted from the video and sent to the defect detectors. So the data is stored in the S3 buckets so that defect detector as a separate service can take that information to identify if there is any freeze within that video or if there is any block corruption or if there are any audio video synchronization issues. These are different defect detector mechanisms using which the video is analyzed so that the team can understand if the video has been streamed properly to the customer or not. Once there is a defect which is detected, there is a notification which is sent real time into the SNS queue and the customer or the consumer can identify that, okay, there is a data defect and we can fix that. Finally, there is an orchestration service which controls all the flow and there is also aggregation of these detected results which again gets stored into S3 bucket for further analysis using their machine learning models. There is a separate blog post mentioned in the current post which talks about how they do machine learning using that results. Now if you see the AWS architectural diagram, they are using AWS step functions to do orchestration. So the orchestration in itself or the workflow in itself is controlled by AWS step functions which controls the data using the lambdas as an entry point. It goes to the media conversion service, identify and get all the information about the audio. It also triggers the sub AWS uh, step functions, which are the defect detectors. These defect detectors increases over a period of time, depending on the type of defects which they come up with. For example, freezing in is one type of defect. Block corruption is another type of defect. Audio synchronization issues another type of defect. So these individual defect detectors can be run as a separate workflow. That way we can scale it as well. However, it becomes complicated because there is one more step function which orchestrates within that step function. So you have like nested step functions 
or workflows to handle the whole flow. Finally, once the defect detectors identifies that all the defects are identified from a particular frame, then they get aggregated by another Lambda function, which gets again pushed into S3 bucket. So if you see here, the cost adds up in terms of running the media conversion service, which is outside the step function. I presume these are running in the EC2 instances. Again, there is AWS Lambda function, which acts as an entry point for the customer so that it coordinates the media conversion service with the triggers for the defect detectors. Again, within defect detectors, there are some compute functions which are useful for processing the video and finding defects. And finally, there is an aggregation Lambda, which aggregates these results and pushed into S3. So there are different services within AWS, which are getting leveraged. And again, the notifications are sent to SNS real time, which is again an added cost. In addition to all these, the transfer of data between one service to other is also a cost incurred when we do cross region calls or maybe service to service calls. These add up to the cost as well. Now coming to the new architecture, what the team has proposed and started using, it's a monolithic architecture. Basically, they merged all the three different services into one. So here, if you look at the flow at a high level, they have migrated everything from serverless function Lambda into Amazon ECS as an individual task. So ECS has a task. If you look at it, task is a single computation workload, which ECS triggers. And within a task, they have merged three different operations, which they were doing earlier separately into one particular huge task. So imagine it like one particular container running all these in one go. So in the new architecture, this is how the flow goes. A customer, when they start watching a video, the call comes to the media converter API, which is exposed and the data gets streamed. The audio on the video gets streamed to the media converter. Unlike the previous approach where the media converter was pushing the data to an S3 bucket. Now it's getting pushed into the instance memory. So within the instance, we are keeping that audio video stream so that there is a performance benefit. We are not pushing the data to S3, downloading it from again from the uh, detector service. We are keeping it in memory within the instance, basically within the instance, we are storing it in the same format. And then the media converter notifies the orchestrator saying that now you can go and do the detection on that particular data. So the detection service will now use that particular audio buffer or the video buffer and understand what's happening. Once the detection is completed, the results are then aggregated and then sent to the corresponding S3 buckets. Parallelly, the results are also notified real time using the Amazon SNS queue, which can be listened and then actions can be taken upon depending on the results. This is how Amazon Prime Video team has changed their serverless architecture from here to a monolithic architecture where there is only one single task and within that task, they are doing all these together. So the next question arises is, okay, you save some cost. Now, how did you scale your monolithic application? Because the biggest disadvantage when we face with monolith is how do we scale the monolith, right? Now let's look at how this team scale the monolithic application. If we zoom down to what's happening within that particular ECS task, this is how the architecture looks like. The team started cloning the detectors as and when they identified that there's a need for scale. So there's not just one process which is running. Instead, they're running multiple processes or multiple copies of these same processes as a separate cluster. So if let's say there are few detectors which are lightweight, they have just combined them together and then run it in one particular cluster. And as and when the detectors increases, they can easily add a new cluster and the orchestrator service redirects the request to that new cluster as well. So what's happening here is whenever there is a new audio stream coming in, the audio stream request goes to both the clusters and the same data is getting duplicated in both the processes. So they added a lightweight orchestration layer to distribute the customer request. However, the data gets duplicated. Of course, there are benefits in terms of doing that. There is duplication of data of the audio and the video, both in this cluster and also in this cluster. But this allows the team to scale at a much faster pace than what they were able to do before, along with keeping the costs low. Now let's understand what were the results and the takeaways to summarize and conclude how did they come up with the new architecture being an efficient one. I have just taken the exact snippet on what's the results and the takeaways in the blog and let's break down individual bits. So what they say is microservices and serverless components are tools that do work at a high scale, but whether to use them over a monolith has to be made on a case by case basis. 
this is where system design and understanding the component is very much important and looking at individual architectures on a case by case basis makes us understand why we choose a particular tech stack over another the next point is moving the service to a monolith reduce their infrastructure cost by 90 percentage this is due to the fact that aws step functions have been taking more resources and also lambda functions have been consuming a lot more resources than they were expecting it to be and after a scale or after a point in time serverless proves to be costlier and this is a classic example where serverless doesn't fit everybody always by moving to the solution of ec2 with ecs and leveraging the aws compute saving cost they were able to drive this cost down compared to what they were spending on lambdas and step functions one significant mention here is the usage of data getting deduplicated in multiple detectors which is the media conversion service instead of that they could have created a cache and used that cache across these two instances that's one improvement which they can think of doing they can have a single block volume mounted across these two instances write the data in one of them one of the servers write the data into the block volume the other can just read from there of course using this approach they were able to do things faster which provided them better customer experience in identifying more defunct videos faster i hope you were able to understand why amazon prime video moved from microservices based architecture to monolithic based architecture so whenever you are designing a system understand the pros and cons and take decisions wisely so that you create an efficient system on the cloud as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much